We're joined by the unified MMA featherweight champion, Majid Hamo, who beat a very tough Neil Anderson at Unified MMA 45. Congratulations. Uh, how are you doing? How does it feel to be a champion? Thank you. I feel good. I feel good. I feel I want to uh, prove a point, and I did that, and I made a statement in that ring, and uh, leave it at that. Right on. We're, we're going to get into that statement. I'm, I'm curious to, to hear uh, more about this match. Let's talk about the, the match. Uh, what was the strategy going into the, this match for you against Neil Anderson? Uh, the strategy was uh, I was working more on my conditioning because last fight I had with him, I was pretty gassed, as you can tell. <laughs> um, so I worked on my conditioning and I wanted to make it so that way I can go to the grind and make it to the end of the fight like I did last time. And I had no strategy, really. But when the fight started, I kind of figured I have to make him from stop moving so much. His reach was good. His footwork was good. And I couldn't hit him. So trying to chop that leg down a bit so he slows down before I can get him. Interesting. So so you didn't necessarily have a, a plan going into the match uh, beyond have going in with, with great cardio and, and, and whatnot? You didn't have like... A particular because this is the second time you, you fought you fought Neil it is, yeah, yeah. Anderson. Uh, it, it's interesting that you say you, you didn't really have have a plan because it seemed it seemed like I, I've watched both fights, of course, and uh, both were really entertaining as a fan. I think as fans, we can certainly ap appreciate the quality of the Thank match. You, yeah. And anyone who wants to watch it, obviously, it's on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, huh. But one of the things, what would you say? What did you notice about your opponent this time around? He, this was the second time you fought him. How was his strategy or his approach overall? How, how did it differ from this particular match? Uh, I feel like the first time I fought him, he actually came more aggressive and um, he was throwing more power shots where he was connecting me. Uh, this time around, he wasn't really himself, I felt like. But uh, I noticed he didn't want to go to the ground at all. Just because of, you know, my jiu-jitsu background, I'm pretty good at it, so... I think he, uh, he was kind of hesitant that I kind of capitalized on it. That's right. No, it's, it's interesting you, you say that because we didn't see much groundwork from him. Uh, whereas the first time you fought it was there was a lot of interesting exchanges on, on the ground. Uh, and it, it certainly it, he certainly wanted it appeared like he wanted to keep it standing. Um, now, I noticed you 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 used a lot of oblique kicks uh, in in this match, whereas in the first one you didn't. Uh, I don't recall seeing any. Correct me if I'm wrong. Whose idea was it to introduce this kick and use it to your advantage? Because you used it tactically, at, at, like right from the get go, and you really kind of established a, a pace. Uh, my coach Lee Mian, he usually uh, teaches us stuff like that. He's very good at utilizing to break the person down. And we called the thing called uh, probing and uh, the five P's where we kind of probe the person, see what he does and reacts. And then the next one, we kind of connect with it. So to see, and then uh, the bleak kicks is one of them that he was teaching us. It actually didn't come into my head until uh, the fight started. Wow. It, um, <laughs> it was like last minute. I just noticed wow. it was working. So I kept going with it. And I was trying to be more smart and more intellect in this fight instead of just brawling it out. I wanted to show that I'm a high level fighter and uh, kind of perform at that pace with the high caliber guys, right? Not just uh, throwing big bombs and stuff, but actually thinking in the fight instead of, you know, and I was comfortable everywhere. I was more than happy to be standing with him and uh, the big kicks were working. So I just kept on with it. Yeah, they, they certainly made quite the statement right away for, for his stand up. And he, even the commentators were, were alluding to that right from the get go. It seemed that, uh, even though there's there's a height differential between the both of you, he's 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 six feet tall. He's 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 very tall for for that division, and I I'm assuming he probably has longer reach. But he does, that yeah, only, yeah <laughs> I mean that didn't matter one bit because with the oblique kicks and just the the way you were moving forward and and just you know creating space and and creating opportunities for the attacks with with this probing approach as as you mentioned really disrupted. It seemed like it disrupted his, his approach. Now, it's interesting, too, because you were smiling, grimacing, and laughing a lot during the match. <laughs> what, what's up with that? Fun. I was actually having a lot of fun in there. It was good. Okay, so 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 that's it. You were just having fun. You were just smiling. I was just having fun. That's all it was. I was just enjoying myself and being in the moment, you know, and that's what it was, I think. I think that's what gave me the extra energy 
I uh, I felt like a lot better in this fight. My uh, cardio, everything, I was ready to go. Even after the fourth round, I was ready to keep going. Like, I felt good this one. And uh, I think this is what I'm going to keep going. This is the path I'm going to go and continue on. Very interesting. Yeah, I, I think the, the smiling and, and, and the grinning was, was very... Uh, I'm curious to know what, what Neil, you, your opponent, thought about it because it seemed <laughs> it, it was very deceptive. You know, you, you don't know how to, to assess that. As fans, of course, we're seeing that and we could see that you're clearly having fun. Now, lead us towards uh, the fourth round where you finished your opponent in, in a really spectacular fashion. Because Thank you. there was there was an you know a great exchange on the ground, a great scramble. We see a lot of uh, you know great grappling, but then all of a sudden it goes to standing. Please give us a summary of, of, of that exchange from what you recall. So what happened was I was switching my stances and I was off balance, and he got me with a really good right to the forehead actually. He <laughs> and I went flying back, and I noticed he jumped on me right away, and his corner was kind of saying, "Don't go to the ground with him." And I knew right away, I was still all good there, right? So I, uh, right away, I kind of reversed it to so I can go to my guard. And then I used that to get up and uh, do what I do. I do submissions most of the time. And then uh, right before we got up, actually, he cut me open a few times with a couple elbows. And uh, I was about to use uh, my jiu-jitsu to kind of choke him out. It, like, I got the guillotine pretty good. Once I get that, I'm usually pretty good at finishing it. But I kind of wanted to make a statement. So that's when I let go and stood up a bit. And I uh, kind of wanted to go back on my feet again because this is the, that was my goal was to finish the standing. That, you know, our coach says finish the fight no matter what because the judges, you never know. So I wanted to uh, make a point. And then I noticed he was tired as we got up. And that's when I was timing the jab. So after the third jab, I think it was, I timed it. And I noticed he was doing the same thing. And that's when I stepped in and do the overhand right, and I noticed it connected right away because I threw a couple more of those before that, you know, like the probe and see if it works, and it did work before, so I noticed it connected perfectly, and that's when I went in for the finish with the left hook and the uppercut and stuff. Yeah, man, it was spectacular. I think it was almost like a six, seven hit combo straight out of... Like... You didn't want to go down? <laughs> no, you didn't. I mean, you, you took him down, especially with, with the uppercut. He was tough. He was tough, I got to say. Very, very tough and, and talented as, as well. Oh, I mean, he is. He was know... smart. Sorry? He was very smart in that fight. I noticed that. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting too because comparatively between the first match, the, this is the second time you guys fought, of course, but this time around, it seemed like, you know, for as a spectator, as you're just watching, the approach seemed to be very different, you know, in terms of what we're seeing hell of a lot more striking in, in, this, in, in, in this particular match than the first. The first had a good balance of, of striking and grappling, but, but this one here had some, some interesting grappling moments. But the striking is certainly the way it finished is spectacular. People want to go back and, and, and see that sequence. I, I certainly uh, erupted. Thank for you. That it was a good it was, finish. Yeah, man. It was, it was a very entertaining finish. Now, I, I got to ask you, I'm sure you watched the fight again. What were some of the lessons learned for you for, from re-watching the fight and, and listening to, to some of the feedback? I would imagine you, your, your coach and team gave you. How, how has this experience how will it make you a better competitor? Uh, I noticed a few things actually that I do and uh, and it was uh, the stuff I need to work on. So I did see a lot of holes in my game still and I noticed I dropped my hands a lot still and whatnot. So I got to keep working on that and try and get better at closing my guard more as he throws, right? So um, yeah, I'll probably work on that and other stuff. But I did see a lot of holes in my game still and I'm going to keep getting better and better better and closing those gaps until, you know, the time comes to the big games. So that way I'm ready when the time does come. I'm ready for those guys that are coming in hard and I'm not making any mistakes. Right on. Uh, in terms of fighting and competing, if, if you don't mind me asking, why do you fight and compete? What's your motivation? Honestly, I enjoy it. There's no money in it because you're still broke. No matter how many times you fight these days, you're broke because your money that you're making is paying for your food for your everything right mm -hmm. so in regards to that there's no money so you have to enjoy it if you don't there's no point and i love it i love being in there you've noticed i come down the stairs and i'm smiling already yeah i, I mean you, you, you ran in there and then the fireworks or whatever exploded yeah, it got me. <laughs> it scared me <laughs> and, and it was, it's it was, funny. 
Go ahead. Uh, go ahead she warned me. She warned me about the stacks. She said, be careful. The stacks are coming up with smoke. So don't be scared. And it still got me. <laughs> it was funny, too, because you weren't even wearing your shirt or anything. You were, like, ready to go in there and, yeah. and fight, right? You had ready to take off your shirt and you're running. And then all of a sudden, we see you running through. And then the lights or whatever cool, <laughs> cool thing that was goes off. And you're like, whoa. And I'm like, <laughs> was this planned? Was this a work, you know? But no, no. It was uh, it was. Your, no, your really got me. <laughs> that, that, that was really, really cool, man. So, may I ask, what got you into the sport of mixed martial arts? It's, give us kind what of brought your, me. Yeah, what, what what got you into the game? I, honestly, I was uh, I was a young kid who got into trouble a lot, <laughs> and my coach Lee Mean kind of uh, took me under his wing, and uh, instead of wasting my time on stupid stuff and getting in trouble, I wasted it at the gym. Then I was too tired to do anything. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> That's always a good solution. <laughs> um, what? Uh, when's your next fight? Uh, when's, I, when... I honestly don't know. I'm just uh, I'm just taking some time off right now to kind of figure out some uh, other stuff, and then uh, I'm still training though. I won't be stopping training, and um, hopefully soon we'll see what comes up. We'll see what's next. We'll see who's all winning these days and uh, who wants to compete. What in, in terms of weight division, you, you fight in, in the 145. Uh, you're obviously the featherweight champion. Would you be open to fighting at lighter weights? I'll probably do it, but uh, I'm comfortable with that weight. I don't have to cut too much. I'm not draining myself. I feel good. I'm happy doing that. So, in that regards, I, I don't know. It would have to be a really good fight. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. And it's interesting too because one of I, I, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to reach out and, and interview you, uh, you know, in, in addition to, to, to the great performance you put on, obviously, is your post-fight interview was a really interesting one. Uh, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase what you said. You thanked the fans, but then you also said something interesting along the lines like uh, of if there were no fans, uh, there wouldn't be, you know, a sport or an event, something to that effect. Correct me yeah, if yeah. I'm wrong. I, I, I found that to be, uh, and I'm not kidding when I say this, really w very insightful uh, and, and a, a key point that you mentioned. Why did you make the, that statement about uh, the value of, of the fans and, and the audience for the sport? Well, if you think about it, if they love me or hate me, if those people didn't show up, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If they just decided no more people and just us fighting, it would be fun and all. But those people kind of give you the energy. Even if they're cheering for Neil, it still pumps me up because I want to be like, no, I want you guys to cheer for me when I'm done this fight. And I've done that both times where they've cheered for Neil and I win the crowd over every time. And that's what I do. I, I win crowds over. I'm a fighter who uh, detains the crowds. So without the crowds, it would be no, you know, it wouldn't be as fun. It's, uh, it's, it's really cool that, that you mentioned that we, we don't hear a lot. We don't hear that much from, from, from fighters in, in the sense that, yes, they, they thank the fans, but they, they don't put the big picture in context that it's almost, it's an audience driven sport, right? Fans want it to is, see, yeah. you know, fighters, great fighters, entertaining fighters, talented fighters, so on and so forth. And it's interesting that, that you, uh, that you highlighted that. Now, as far as your your next, uh, you you mentioned you don't know who you'll be fighting next. What's the overall experience been at Unified MMA for, for you as as a fighter? What, what what's what's that experience been like? That's been good. I love fighting for them. Actually, they're a good company to fight for. Um, the ring, the cage is amazing. I love fighting that cage. Just so much room, moving around. All in all, they've been a really good experience with them, and I'm hoping. Uh, just your net wins that title, so I can go take it from him. <laughs> wow, wow! Oh, so you want a rematch against the? I do. Just... I've always wanted my rematch with him, but uh, we've always been separated places. So I'm looking forward for him. I hope he wins, so that way uh, we can have a battle. That'll be interesting. I mean, he's he's he also has a documentary project. He's uh, the, you know I don't know if you've heard about his, his documentary film that that's following him uh, uh, in into his next fight, and it'll be interesting to see. That, that film, but speak to us about uh, his, his, the match you had with him, how it finished and what, what you took away from, from that match in terms of what you do, the lessons learned for you. Um, the first match I had with him, I was not ready uh, mentally or physically. I was not in shape. It was a short notice. And uh, I just, that wasn't me as I was, I already lost the battle before the fight even started in my head. 
And mm. I didn't like if you lose a battle before the fight, you lost the fight. Right. And that's what happened. And um, I've always regretted that because in my head, if I would have told myself differently, I would have won. I could have won that fight. But I told myself I don't need to win it. I don't know why. So I really want the rematch to kind of redeem myself for that one because I know I'm better than that. Are you going to call him out right here, right now? And, and... Hurry up and win that fight so we can fight. <laughs> right. <now. laughs> Speak to us also. I think you had a... Um... You had a surgery, right? The knee, knee surgery a, a couple of years ago or so? I can, did, can, yeah. yeah. Can, can so the first time us? I fought Neil was uh, three years after my knee surgery. So three years before that, I hadn't fought since. So that was my first one. So that's probably why I was gassed out too. <laughs> Interesting. You know, just coming back. What was Starting that? to get the groove back. What was that? The, the, the left or, or, or right uh, leg? And That and was how- my right leg. It was uh, ACL, MCL, and meniscus. Wow. Kind of the whole thing, yeah. Wow, very interesting. And overall, how's your health now? How's your your lay your your knee? And, it's and never that? been better. It's weird because after my knee surgery, I kind of uh, went towards jiu-jitsu more, and now my uh, overall experience as a fighter is good because I got both now, stand up and ground. So I'm not really worried where I go. That's kind of why I want to compete with uh, these high level guys right now because I'm feeling good. In terms of background and, and styles, you, you obviously have a jiu-jitsu background, but what additional s- styles do you have? Do you, do, you, do you have a background in taekwondo as well? No, no. Just jiu-jitsu and kickboxing. Just, okay. A little bit of wrestling now, too. I'm adding some wrestling. <laughs> you, so you, you, you wrestled in high school sort of thing or just were wrestling? No, no. The just gym? at the gym. We got a friend, uh, Steve Michael. He's, uh, he teaches us wrestling on Fridays and uh, all the other guys do some more wrestling there, too. So it's good. If we can go back to your first match against Neil, you did an interesting, uh, almost like, a, you know, the Kani Babasami from judo, like the crab leg takedown into the into the inverted heel hook, or it wasn't inverted. Oh, the was scissor it? sweep. S- scissor sweep, yes. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you did that. What did were you trying to set that up again in the sec in the second match? Were you? I thought at about one it point? a few times, and right. then uh, I kept hearing my coach say the basics. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? <the> basics. <laughs> So he, he saw so that's that what I did. He saw, Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Because that's I, one was, of my favorite moves. I usually, uh, at the gym, I play around with it a lot. So I'm like, well, if I do it there, might as well do it in the fight, right? I, I couldn't believe how easily it was for you to, to execute that. Because, you know you know what I mean? You you, you got him quite easily with, 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 with that uh, uh, scissor sweep right yeah, yeah. into the into the leg lock. I was like, damn. That's why when I saw, when, when, when you fought again the second time, it was almost at one point, it was almost as if you were going in for, for the entry. It was a different one. I was trying a different one. I was trying, uh, we were working on a different one, but okay. it didn't quite work out, so I got out of there. <laughs> well, may I ask which one you were working for? Uh, it was uh, your right arm goes across, and okay. then your right leg goes behind him, and you do a sweep with your arm. Okay, okay. Intr- I'll it's have a, to it's see- a different one. I'll have to see that in your next match. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Just a few more questions for you. To tell us a bit about your coach and uh, in, in terms of his coaching style. How would you describe him as a coach? Uh, he's amazing. Um, there's something w- w- between me and him that just connects, you know. Uh, we click. So he kind of, um, he sees the stuff that I don't see in a fight. And he, I kind of, uh, I listen to the background to him a lot. If you notice in that fight, there was a few combos he was saying. I was actually throwing them. He sees a lot more than I do, and he just knows my style. And uh, he kind of works with me really well. And uh, the way he teaches is amazing. If I follow exactly what he says, I won't lose any fights. But, you know, a fight's the fight. You never listen fully. Right, right. But it's it's interesting that, you know, you, you have that connection with, with, with your coach, obviously, and, and you're actively A lot of listening. time. Yeah, that, that you're actively listening to, to him in the corner. Now, just a la- last question for you. Leading into your next fight, uh, at Unified MMA, what can we expect for, from you? Uh, you'll be expecting to see stuff that you've never seen. <laughs> <laughs> right on, I man. always try and entertain. So if I can put something on there that uh, the fans haven't seen, I'll do it. Right on. Well, thank you very much for your time. I, I don't want to take up uh, any, any more of your time. I appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you uh, compete again. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.